We are back on Morning Line talking uh, with uh, Tennessean reporter David Boucher about his uh, um, expose on Elbert Thornton, an inmate in the Tennessee system who died, and the question as to how. You hear about this kind of stuff, you know, does it happen? You bet it happens. Did it happen in this case? It depends on who you talk to, I suppose. Mm -hmm. But uh, can you tell me what motivation would the Department of Corrections have for not coming clean for perhaps what really happened to him? What on earth motivation would they have for not wanting to be maybe truthful about this? And I'm not saying they're not being truthful, but if there is something going on, why wouldn't they? Sure, and as, as you know, um they, there's nothing necessarily that says that they're not being truthful. Right. And in my conversations with the department, they've seemingly been a little bit apologetic or trying to be apologetic that, oh, well, we'd love if you could see these records, you could see the full story, but we can't release these records. Which is like what you DCS, did. Yes, and I understand the privacy. So that, they're bound by that, and that's not their fault because uh, sure. it's based on the law. It's not sure. their choice. The law binds them. They, you know, I, it must drive them crazy. If there's something in there that they know would clear this up and they can't give it to you, that, I feel for them on that. But we just don't know, do we? No, we don't. The, and, and that being said, we've heard <laughs> for, for weeks from the commissioner and from the governor that these prisons are safe and that this idea of, of reporting that I've done and that other media outlets have mm -hmm. done about violence going up is simply overblown. And after we heard that for weeks, we went into a legislative hearing where the department reported that al although the number of incidents classified as assaults have gone down since 2008, the number of interactions that they call staff inmate provocations yeah. have tripled. And so, so they just changed the definition right, of so assault. So it seems to indicate that the actual number of incidents aren't <laughs> changing but they don't consider a staff inmate provocation, which could be anything from an officer getting hit in the in the chest with bodily fluids to you know something else getting thrown at them but not hitting them in the head. Hmm. Uh, they classify those as nonviolent offenses, and so because you can classify something like that as a as a staff inmate provocation and not as an assault, they don't have to classify it as something that's violent. And so that's where they're arguing that oh well, violence is going down at the same time that the number of incidents are relatively consistent. Okay. Now, since this um, article ran, what, what, can you give me some just, what's the feedback been like? What have you heard? And I want you to address the issue that there are some, and, and we both deal in the media business, when we do stories about inmates, I sometimes get the sense from some sure. of the viewer response along the lines of, well, yeah, that's too bad, but you know what? If he didn't want to get his butt kicked, he shouldn't have committed the crime to go to jail in the first place. That's what happens. It's a bad place. Bad thing happen to you behind bars. I, I sometimes get the sense, I'm not saying all of you feel that way, but that it's almost like, well, you know, yeah, that's wrong, but still, hey, you don't want to have this happen to you. Don't commit the crime and go to jail in the first place. That's sure. not part of the sentence, by the way, see, so. And we've, we've gotten yeah. a little bit of feedback like that. Most of the feedback has, has been the opposite, has okay. been just asking questions and, and concerned about what happened, and that's including some feedback from Democratic State Senate uh, caucus leader uh, Jeff Sar uh, Yarbrough, the, the senator here for Nashville, he's called for a, a further investigation into the death and what actually happened. Have any Republicans voiced any interest? Uh, we've heard in general about prison issues from Republicans, okay. not specifically about this, this case. One? We've heard specifically from Lieutenant Governor Ron Ramsey a couple times uh, who believes that there are issues within the prison system. It should um, be a nonpartisan issue, in my opinion. And, and largely, it has been. There, now, there have been more calls, I guess, in, in specifically from uh, Democratic House Caucus Chairman Mike Stewart, a, a Nashville mm -hmm. Democrat. But we have, like I said, heard from, from Lieutenant Governor Ron Ramsey, who has said he's told the governor when there's this much smoke, there's typically fire. Mm -hmm. he's, he told us recently that he thinks the governor is kind of shifting his viewpoint on some of these issues. And we did hear recently from the commissioner saying that he did plan to make some sort of change is both to the way the state classifies violent attacks in prison and to the way that officers are, are scheduled. But you're right, we have heard from both Republicans and Democrats in the House and the Senate that this is, that something's happening that, that we need to change. And the public sentiment too, as you said, they're just kind of, well, you cannot read this stuff without going, ugh, this is awful. Sure, and, and at the same time, as you know, we have had a couple calls and, a co and heard from a couple people who said, you know, he, he should have thought about that before he committed his crime, mm -hmm. and that prison is an inherently violent place. And to an extent, they're right. It is obviously violent, and as the commissioner has noted, you can't prevent every attack. But I, I think that this is kind of a, a, a good point from Mr. Thornton's daughter. I asked yeah. her that specific, specific question, why should somebody care? And she said, like any other inmate, he was someone's father, grandfather, brother, sibling, son, just like anybody else, and no one has the right to take the life of someone else. Right. Uh, under any circumstance, unless they're sentenced to death for some crime, and his sentence was 18 years, he was due up for parole. 
they need to serve their sentence under under the law sure. and the law did not say he serves 18 years and while he's there we are going to burn his genitals and break his ribs that's not part of the equation can you um, specify again you touched on this earlier cause and manner of death the the differentiation, because that sometimes can be confusing to folks. You think, oh yeah, what's the cause of death? Okay, cause of death was strangulation. Seems pretty. Is that can that sure. be different than manner? That's it is actually, and there's that's kind of a, a, a key distinction here in this case. The state of Tennessee defines cause of death as the physical injury that caused the death of a person. That could also be an illness or, or something else. And the manner of death describes the circumstances surrounding that. Okay, death. so meaning like if I die because I have a rib that punctures my lung and I bleed out or something. Okay. Okay, that is the cause of death. But if that, the manner of death is that someone hit me in the side, breaking that rib, forcing it into my lungs. Right, and, and in that case, then the manner of death would be homicide. Okay, so Whereas, in, all right. and, and the cause of death is the actual physical injury or, or incident or, or disease or something like that that, that led to that death. Makes sense. Okay, so in, in Thornton's case, the cause and manner, what was this again? The cause was? The cause was, as we, as we uh, discussed earlier, yeah, it was, the multiple blunt traumatic okay. and thermal injuries. Which the had brought blood in his lungs and that's right, broken and ribs. Contusion on the head, other, other injuries. The manner of death, and the state could have chosen natural, accidental, suicide, homicide, or undetermined. The state chose natural. The medical examiner chose undetermined. Right. And so that was where we had the question. The, med the medical examiner, obviously, is the medical expert here, not the Tennessee Department of Correction investigator. The investigator listed this as natural when the expert listed this as just couldn't figure it out. I mean, again, without being able to see his medical record from the, the Department of Corrections, I mean, to... To, what do you think of when you think natural death? When I think natural death, I think of my grandma passing away in her sleep. Absolutely, that's what I was thinking. Of yeah. her heart stopping. I know that's oversimplifying. There's other methods of perhaps natural death, but that's what I think. At the very least, considering the level of trauma here, that's what, I, that's what I'm trying to look at. I'm trying to give Department of Corrections as much of the benefit of the doubt as I can based on the fact that they can't share everything with us. But that alone is, I'm not saying that they should have come right out and said homicide, but undetermined. To say natural, when you look at the level of trauma, just defies belief under any circumstance. Sure, and, that, and it also surprised, like I said, the warden at the prison at the time. When this specific incident happened, the warden, who, who was Jerry Lester at the time, was out on an injury that he sustained at work. The investigator came to his, his house and told him, we had this death happen. Every death of an inmate is reported mm -hmm. to the warden. We had this death happen, but it was a natural. Don't worry about it. And then when he returned to work and he read the medical examiner's report, he read the report as a homicide. Hmm. And this is coming from someone who used to work in the department's internal affairs department. Yeah. He, he was an investigator before. And this is where he says he called people who were involved in the investigation where at that point Mr. Lester says they complained about being overworked and that they didn't hmm. have a ton of time and that they were too busy following up on parolees and probationers to, to in general, do the work they need to for investigations. Mm -hmm. And so that was another just sort of red flag once I talked to him. That, oh, that's something man. that there's just more right. questions here. Oh, there's no question about it, because that comes down to it. If you check natural causes, then for them anyway, they're thinking, unless a reporter or a family really goes after it, that's the end of it. Whereas if they check homicide, of course, that's a big deal. They're not going to check that. Okay, I can understand that. But they check undetermined. Well, that basically demands that this needs to be looked into sure. a little more. And they're of the situation at this point that, one, maybe they know something was wrong here and they're trying to cover their butts. Or two, at the very least, has overworked as they are. The last thing they want to do is check undetermined and have to spend the next few days or weeks investigating to figure out if they can determine the cause of death. No, and that's or and the that's, method of it, right? Yeah, no, that's that's. I'm just I mean, trying to walk to extent, through yeah. the most. You know, what am I missing? You know, we don't have anyone from the Department of Corrections here to kind of share. We know what they said, and I guess uh, again, Nasa Taylor, who's you know the head of the, the Public Information Office there, says that this was again um, reported as a natural death, and uh, she said. Uh, it was not, um, so he could have been, he, this was not a case of someone beating, being beaten up or assaulted, is what she said. No, and that's right. And, and, and as no I, foul play. Yeah, and as, as we noted, that she's, she's pointed to this idea of multiple medical issues. She's, she's mm -hmm. the person who said that, that Mr. Thornton might have, might have fallen out of bed, hinted, hinted at the idea that he might have had seizures, which in theory could cause someone to, to seize and, 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 fall, and fall out of bed. Right. Um, 
And again, in theory, seizures could be listed in, in the realm of, of maybe leading to, to natural death. It's worth noting, too, that the medical examiner's report doesn't say that Mr. Thornton had a heart attack. It doesn't say that he had you right. know any of these other seemingly expected natural occurrences that could lead to what I guess you or I as non-medical experts would think of mm -hmm. as a natural death. Um, what did it say then was, I mean, medically the cause of death? All of a sudden he lost the flow of blood to his brain or what, what happened? It didn't, it didn't specifically get into detail as to how that actually happened, but again... Or his heart stopped? Right, it, right, and that's, I think, obviously common, but, yeah, I mean, uh, but it does list, again, multiple blunt, traumatic, and thermal injuries mm -hmm. as the cause of death. So according to a medical ex expert, the, 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 the thing that caused Mr. Thornton's death were these multiple blunt traumatic and thermal injuries. Okay, and Dr. Bill Mannion, who you mentioned is the medical examiner out of New Jersey who looked at it at the case file for you, That's right. said that um, you know it's very unlikely that he would have been able to sustain these types of uh, injuries or traumas from, say, instance, and I know Department of Corrections was just using it as a possible example, falling out of bed. Right. They didn't say that's what happened, but they used that as a possibility, and then it, there's just no doubt in his mind that it's a very suspicious death. Um, now, it does say, again, um, aside from hepatitis C, intravenous drugs that perhaps he had used, he suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder and depression. What that tells me is that he was a problematic inmate. I don't know if that's fair, but what I mean by that is that this is someone that, for whatever reason, because of maybe of these conditions, was, was more of a handful at times or something like this, could maybe get on people's nerves because he had a lot of needs, who knows, whatever it is, and maybe someone lost patience with him and killed him. I, uh, yeah, I'm trying I, to think. I don't, you know? I don't know any of that, and I'm not sure that necessarily that's what, I don't know what that's this points true. to. But I think, it, I think the important part, as we talk about, is that it points to the fact that the medical examiner knew that he had these issues and knew what medications he, he was taking at the time and still thought that it wasn't relevant enough to list it I within know, its exactly. cause of death. I mean, and under no circumstance, whatever, whether he has post-traumatic stress, depression, anything, does that justify what happened to him? I'm not trying to say that in any way. I'm trying to just try to figure out what really might have happened behind closed doors on a day-to-day -day basis sure. that may have led him to suffer this type of trauma and beating that ultimately likely led to his death. All right, um, real quick, just two minutes left. You know, I, I always ask Phil Williams with uh, our I team, you know, what's next? What, what's happening next? Uh, sure. I mean, for you, um, I suppose you'll follow the legal situation here. Um, you've done That's all right. the digging you can on this. Perhaps other cases will come to light. I, I, I don't want you to give away your exclusives, but what happens next? Sure. So we, we kind of thought that this was potentially indicative of just overall issues that are going on within the department. We've done some significant reporting, as has, has everybody else, on some of these issues in, in the department. So that's kind of where we're, we're focusing on next. As I said, there have been hearings where the commissioner has, he, he hasn't acknowledged that there, there are yeah. any issues, but he's decided that they probably need to make some changes to improve, one, officer morale, two, improve the way that officers are scheduled, and three, improve the way that they classify Violent acts, and so we're gonna act, we're gonna follow up with that to see if that actually happens. Um, and you know, we continue to get tips every day from from officers and from inmates and from their families, and we're gonna continue to follow up with those. And, and I would envision, you know, I don't know about similar stories, but certainly other investigations in the future. Great, look forward to it. Always like having another reporter on. David Boucher, thank you for coming on. Sure, it's a thank pleasure. You. And if there are more developments, maybe we can do more in the future. But that's a really nice piece. Thanks Appreciate again it. for thank coming you. on. Take a break. Be back with a programming note about tomorrow right after this. Stay with us.